Alrighty, lads, we are back with some Legacy of Cain lore. This time, what the fuck is the Elder God? Now, this is going to be a lot of theories as to what it is the Elder God actually is. So, for this video, we're going to briefly discuss what we know is concrete fact, and then we're going to dive into the theories afterwards. So, for those of you who are expecting, like, hardcore concrete answers, this is not going to be one of those cases. You see, Legacy of Cain is very Shakespearean in its story writing where nothing is explicit. Very, very little in the universe is concrete like, yes, this is a fact. No, most of it is through interpretation. How do you view what the situation is going on? So with that being said, I'm going to be very neutral on this. I'm going to whet your appetite. I'm going to make you crave for the juiciest answers as to what exactly is the Elder God, why I tell you all these theories as to what he could possibly be. You guys excited? So am I. Alright, let's begin. So, what do we know about the Elder God? Well, we know this. He is both spiritual and material at the same time. Now, this is a very interesting situation, because we've got very few individuals who are like this. You see... He exists in the spiritual realm and the material realm at the same time, and he can interact with both realms at the same time. And he even calls himself the god, the god of the wheel, the wheel of fate. Now, the wheel of fate is birth, death, and rebirth. Now, we have never seen him give birth to anything, probably a thank god on that, but we have seen that he has many agents in both the spectral realm and the material realm. Now, his agents, his worshippers in the material realm, are usually just that. They're just worshippers. Usually people who believe in him as a god, some sort of hall, all almighty figure. But the agents he has in the spiritual realm, the spectral realm, those are much more malicious agents those are actually floating spirits that have been given the powers to digest souls now you may wonder why it is that he's giving them this ability well it seems that that's how he is fed and we do know this from concrete from legacy of Cain defiance where he explicitly says that by raziel the main character devouring souls he's actually feeding him and it does seem to be the exact case where when a soul is taken out of the spiritual realm, they are actually put back into the wheel of fate. Something else about this individual that's very interesting is that he is actually omniscient, but there's a limit to it. And this is actually really fascinating. It's one of the reasons why I like Legacy of Cain is that whenever someone says an omnipotent, omniscient god, they always tend to fuck it up. And in this case, Legacy of Cain did it perfectly right. This is how you show omniscience. You can have a conversation with him 2,000 years in the past and then jump 4,000 years before that and he'll pick up the conversation as if you just, you know, as if nothing had happened. It's very interesting. It's very well done. And we see this especially with the Elder God. Now, what's interesting, the reason why I say he's got limited omniscience is that it seems like he suffers the same flaw as Mobius. This is a bit of a spoiler, but when Cain gets his heart ripped out and then kicked into the demon realm, and then when he comes back, Mobius and the Elder God had no idea he was still alive. They thought he was dead. They thought that was it. Cain's gone. But it turns out that is not the case. It's just for some reason they lost their omniscience. Now as to why that is, I can only guesstimate it's because of one reason. And one reason only. Cain is now creating a new timeline that no one has ever scouted before, no one's ever explored. So by him being alive, of course with a new timeline, these omniscient beings would have no idea what to expect. Because it's new. It's a new deck of cards are being dealt with. This is all theory, of course. So let's get back to what we do know. Now what's very interesting about this interesting figure is that many of his worshippers don't even know what he looks like. And this is kind of interesting, and this is actually very key to his whole character, is that he's hidden. He's always hidden, but ever-present. 
he's always in the shadows, but yet he can always grab you at any point in time. He's always hiding in your walls, hiding, crawling around the basement, but at any point in time he can come into your bedroom. He's a very scary god to just lay it out. Like, he's very scary. Because on one hand, no one ever sees him because he's so deep down underwater and inside the planet's fucking crust. But on the other hand, his tentacles have no limit. He can reach wherever he needs to, tear down whatever he wants to tear down. There is one building called the Vampire Citadel, huge skyscraper, and he tore that shit down by himself. And this wasn't even when he was in his prime. In fact, his prime is actually in Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver, we find out that he's not even hiding anymore. He is just full on out there, but no one can really see him because everyone's just dead. And then what they do see, they think it's just, they just think it's reefs or coral, but reality is those are his tentacles encrusted with shells and shit. And it's actually kind of interesting because then it leads to more interesting ideas. If he can rip down a citadel and he's not even in his prime, and here he is in Soul Reaver where he's humongous, he's got all this power to the point he's not even hiding. There's many earthquakes happening in Nazgoth's future, and the Elder God says it's because the world is dying and it's crumbling apart. But on the other hand, if he could tear down a citadel, I have no doubt in my mind that he's probably the one who's destroying the planet. He's probably the one causing the earthquakes. Just by moving his massive tentacles, he's probably destroying the world as we see it. That's very scary. Very interesting indeed. Now, there is some interesting uh, personality traits this guy has. You see, he's actually more like the biblical god, I would say, from the First Testament, in the sense that he will always, always reward you and speak highly of you when you do his bidding. But the moment you question him, we're not even saying going against him, just questioning. Just saying, am I really doing the right thing here? Should I really be doing this? He gets very wrathful very, very quickly. And you can actually see it in the uh, Soul Reaver 2 game particularly, where at first... He is very rewarding to Raziel, always telling him, good job, my servant. Go out there and get him, my friend, blah, blah, blah. But the moment Raziel stops following his orders and just simply ask him why these orders are they what they are, like, why does he have to kill Cain? There's really no point to it. Immediately, instead of answering the question, he becomes deceitful, and he just starts threatening Raziel with this, almighty power that he'll just strike him down and just obliterate his soul but never does he ever do that and it's very interesting as a personality for such a highly strong being if you're truly a god why do you make threats obviously this tool or this person has some use to you i get that but if they're being disobedient, yes, a show of force would definitely whip their ass back into shape, so why not? And this leads to a bunch of theories, which we're going to dive into now. So what exactly is he? Well, there's many ideas. There's many theories. I personally can go either way with all of these theories, honestly. Every single one of them sounds pretty good to me. Uh, one of the more interesting ones that I like is that... You ever look at his eyes? I've been having throughout this video his eye. You could see it all the time. Well, his eye is in a figure like an hourglass. And there's only a few beings in the world who have hourglass shapes on their bodies. And that would be the timekeepers. The guardians of the pillar of time. Mobius, his predecessors, they all had this hourglass shape. Now, his is a little bit more pointed, whereas theirs are a little bit more oval, more rounded. But besides that, they look almost identical. And this can lead to some ideas, some theories. Maybe he is the god of fate. Maybe he is the god of the wheel of fate. Except then that begs the question, why is it he's not giving birth to things? He's only 
killing things and then taking their spirits. But never in the games do we ever see him give birth to things. Some people theorize maybe it's the corruption of Nazgoth has seeped into him. Much like Mobius. Because you have to remember this. Mobius the time streamer, he was technically, if you really go down the whole ladder, he was technically infected by one of the Pillar Guardian's corruptions from the future while he was still in the past because he could now see the entire time stream. He could see and experience the entire timeline at the same time. So he was technically already corrupted by the time he became the Time Guardian. This leads to the similar situation where the Elder God may actually be corrupted himself. This may explain why it is that he's harmed by a purified blade. Because the Soul Reaver, which is a legendary weapon that's capable of just destroying a soul and body asunder, and no armor could resist against it, the Soul Reaver itself was not able to harm him until it was purified. Now, why would a purified blade hurting somebody be so significant? Well, it stands to reason that maybe he's a god who does need to die. Maybe it's time for his wheel to turn. Maybe he truly is the god of the wheel. And the only thing that's left now is for him to die, so that way he can be reborn. That's the idea behind it. That's the reason why he's so evil. It's just because he's expired. He's just a bad tomato that needs to go in the trash. Now, there is another theory, and this one's the most popular one, especially because Raziel himself proclaims it, which is that the Elder God is not actually a god. He's not. He's just a parasite. Now, I have a few issues with this one, but it is actually the most understandable. So we'll talk about it, why it makes so much sense. The Elder God, as I've stated before, has never displayed any godly powers. He's omniscient, sure, but Mobius is omniscient, so who's to say that maybe he's not leeching off of Mobius' knowledge and just pretending that he's playing along? That this whole time he knows what's going on in the timeline because he's a god, but reality is he's friends with the Guardian of Time who's telling him how events will transpire and he's just relaying that information back and you know just pretending just making a facade that is a very interesting idea indeed and then there's also the idea that raziel was not really created and he wasn't even bestowed any gifts by the elder god the whole time that we play raziel in soul reaver one and two he gets his own gifts if anything the elder god is just guiding him telling him hey go over there oh i see you just uh killed your brother well by doing that I can see already you gain the power to do this, gain the power to do that, but never does the Elder God actually give him anything. In fact, I have it right now on a loop, but you can see the recording where the moment Raziel's body and soul drops down to the bottom of the sea, the Elder God doesn't do anything to him. And there's a few reasons why that is, but the main thing is that he keeps telling Raziel, you are indebted to me because I brought you back to life. I brought you back to life. I am the reason why you are still around, why you're alive. But Raziel starts to say, I don't think that's the case. I think you were just there when I died. So in other words, you manipulated me when I was in my weakest moment. But now that I am starting to think things through, it doesn't make any sense at all because you didn't do anything to me whatsoever. The only reason why I'm up and around and walking is the same reason why every other vampire is up and around and walking. Because we're immortal in body and soul. You see, when a vampire dies, their soul lingers in the spiritual realm. This is why the Elder God hates them so much, is that he cannot devour their souls. But... Raziel, why would he be any different? He's a vampire in, spot, in body and spirit just like every other vampire. So the fact that the Elder God claimed ownership of Raziel's resurrection just proves that he's a parasite. He is trying to leech onto people. He's trying to leech onto people who can devour souls 
and then take that spiritual essence for himself. And then this goes into the whole theory that maybe he is a parasite. He is a parasite who's somehow, some way, attached himself to the wheel of fate. The wheel itself. And he has somehow channeled it where there is no birth, death, and rebirth. There's only birth, death, devour. That's all that there is to his wheel now. There is much evidence that supports this, especially seeing his deceitful nature. Like, why does he keep getting rid of his worshippers? Why does he keep destroying buildings that have iconography that connect him to the past? Why does he keep trying to hide who he is from the world? If he's a god, and he keeps saying he is, and he keeps on de demanding that his servants obey him, why does he keep hiding his presence from the world? This is such an odd thing for a wrathful God. You know, for a God who goes, I demand you all to serve me, but I don't want you to know who I am. I don't want you to even hear my voice. I don't want you to know that I even exist. Like, why is that? It makes more sense to say he is a parasite. Now, there's many theories as to how that is. So what kind of parasite is he? Is he his own thing? Is he really just a parasitic squid that somehow latched onto things there's a few theories onto that and with that we can always speculate a few other things one of the theories that i actually came up with was that possibly he's the oldest vampire spirit that's been dead and dormant where he was possibly the first vampire ever to die now this would be interesting of course, it's disproven because the Vampire Citadel shows that the vampires worshipped the Elder God for many, many, many years, way before humanity existed. So, of course, it would make no sense because the vampires are actually able to cross that threshold and, you know, be reborn. That's their whole religion is the whole death, rebirth, birth, death, over and over again. That's, that's their whole religion. But at the same time... In Legacy of Cain Defiance, we also see Time Guardians who were once the ancient vampire race, and they have not been able to cross over into the Wheel of Fate. It was an idea that I kind of liked. The idea that maybe, possibly, he was the very first vampire to die, and for millions of years he just stayed dormant, but finally he found life through sucking life out of spirits. And that's why he exists both corporeally and incorporeally. That would be very interesting of an idea. Turns out that the reason why he hates vampires so, so much is not because they're immortal, not because he cannot harvest them, but it's just simply because there's a risk that if their dead souls linger as long as his had, that now there will be a second elder god that he'd have to compete with. Who knows? It would be a very interesting idea to explore for future Legacy of Cain games. But, there is some very interesting things about the Elder God that I like a lot. I really like Soul Reaver too, the way they showed it, where in the past, when Nazgoth was prospering, the Elder God was minute. He was tiny. He barely existed. But the moment they teleport into the future, where Cain rejects sacrificing himself to the pillars, all of a sudden the Elder God is massive. He's wrapped his tentacles all around the pillars themselves. He's ready to tear them down. It's like, why is that? Unless you truly are a parasite. Unless you were just simply some godlike figure who's become corrupted. Unless there's something much deeper that's wrong here besides you just being some sort of quote-unquote benevolent god. Like, there's a lot of questions about the Elder God that, now that uh, Legacy of Cain's been bought out by another company, hopefully we'll get answers. Hopefully we'll have another game come out that explains it, dives into what he is. But besides that, this has been Free to 700 I am out. I hope you guys enjoyed all this theory crafting and such. It took me a while. It took me a few playthroughs to pick up the little nits and bits and details and also just reading online of discussion boards what people think of their own theories. There's a lot of theories, honestly. A lot. And some of them are just pure garbage. Some people just say random shit. But 
honestly, I like these main three theories, these main three ones. Of course, I'm kind of biased because one of them is my own theory. But besides that, type down below what you guys think. Do you guys think these theories hold water? Do you guys think maybe you have your own theory that's just amazing as hell? Comment down below.